Uh, our interview this morning is with Denver Garrett. Denver was born in Pilot Point, Texas, November of 1932. He served in the Navy for uh, in excess of 20 years from 1951 until the mid to late 70s. His highest rank attained was E5 second class torpedoman. This interview is conducted at Burleson, Texas on Friday, June the 8th, 2012. My name is Dale Dexheimer. I'm not related to Denver in any way. Also in the room we have Milton Gibson and Gary Burton as videographers and Earl Kirkpatrick is an observer. This interview is conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress and also for Operation Remember, City of Burleson, Texas. With that, Denver, you can tell us about your time in the Navy, sir. Really ain't much to tell, except that on the tenders I served on and a couple of uh, destroyers. I served on one destroyer and mourned off of it, and they wouldn't let me off. They said, no, so we're going to keep it. So I went AWOL for 20 days and got off the ship. What'd that cost you? It cost me a rank. Went from seaman to seaman deuce, which is seaman apprentice. And that's, that's about it. Well, let's back up. You were born in Pilot Point. Yeah. What'd your family do in Pilot Point? They worked at the, on the farm. We lived outside of town I'd say probably 10 or 12 years. And then we moved into town. And then that's when I left and went to Burleson, Spain, and places. I you never stayed in the, any place more than two years. Have brothers and sisters, Denver? Yeah. How many? I stayed there about three. Brothers, sisters? Yeah. Okay. I came out of the Navy in 53, and then in 57, I went back in and stayed till I retired. Back in 1951, when you went in, why'd you pick the Navy, Denver? Mm, well, mostly I didn't like the marching and mud holes that the Army and them, and I didn't like no part of the Marines. To right. me, that was the worst bunch of service in my opinion. Why was that? It's just, I guess, the way they had to do things that a lot of people didn't like doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just up and picked the Navy instead. That way I could do a lot of traveling. Did you go, the Korean War was going on when you went in. Yeah. Did you, did you think you, you were going to be drafted maybe? Denver? Yeah. Because I had two brothers that were drafted, and I figured, well, I'm going to join my own branch rather than be drafted in the Army or something that I didn't want no part of. Both those brothers go in the Army? Yeah. They both go to Korea? Yeah, one of them did. They were both drafted, but I was the only one that volunteered and enlisted. Were they older brothers than yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you decide to go in the Navy. <clears throat> Let's see, in 1951, you would have been 19 years old? Yeah. Where'd you go for boot camp? In uh, Great Lakes in San Diego. You went to both? Yeah, I started out in San Diego, and I didn't like what they were doing there, so they kicked me out and sent me to Norfolk. Well, how'd you get to Great Lakes? Uh, by asking for it. Oh, okay, okay. But you did your base at your boot camp pretty much in San Diego. Yeah. I did just about all of it in San Diego for what a couple of years I did in uh, River Spain, Norfolk, Virginia. You were a torpedo man. Yeah. So did you go to, was that the school you went to after you got done with, with boot camp? No, I didn't go to no school. They wanted me to, but I 
told him, I said, no school. I said, I don't want any part of a school. So they Did you think me. you were going to make a career out of the Navy back then, Denver? Yeah. Yeah, well, I went in in 51 and decided I was going to stay long enough to retire, which is, I think, 74. Torpedo men is a pretty much a skilled rate. You learned everything on the job, or did they send you to torpedo school somewhere? No, I learned it on the job. I never used to go to no school. Wow. Uh, when you first got out of boot camp, they sent you to a ship? No, they, yeah, they sent me to an LST, which was 528, and I was boot camp. I was in company 828, almost identical. You didn't like that LST? No. So after you spent some time, what did you do on that LST? Let's back up to there. Well, mainly I worked in the deck force. Okay. And then I went to gunnery school for a while. And then I came out and went, went for Meredith Tenders and stayed ever since. When you're on that LST, you ever go you were on the LST on the West Coast, San Diego? No, I was in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk. Okay. They ever send you anywhere like Europe or Puerto Rico or anywhere? Yeah, I went to Puerto Rico and uh, Madrid, Spain, Rota, Spain. All on that LST? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I did a lot of traveling while I was on it. And then when I got tired of the Navy, I came out in 53 and stayed out until 74. And I figured, well, I no like to be in life because I'd been out of it so long. So I just re-enlisted and stayed till I retired. You had to be a torpedo man striker, I think. Yeah. When did you get to be a torpedo man striker? In 51. And then in 55, I got rated the third and Stayed a year and then went okay. second class. What's a torpedo man do, Denver? They overhaul the torpedoes for the submarines. What makes a torpedo run? Just compressed air and uh, what they call ethyl alcohol. They were mixed. And if a guy didn't know what he was doing, he could probably blow himself up. They, a lot of them either knew what they were doing or they didn't fool with it. Because they figured if one of the big people, if the guy didn't know his job, then there wasn't no use having him around. How, how big was this torpedo that you were working on? It was a, I worked on two different types. I worked on the 33, which is, I'd say, about the size of that table, and then the other one about about as long as this room here. How big around were they? Mm, about like that. Okay. How much explosives in them? There's 150 pounds in the head, in the torpedo head, which in, goes on to the air flash. Both types, Denver? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I worked on the electrical torpedoes for a while, and I didn't want no part of that because I don't like to put it with electricity, so I got out of it. Denver, somehow I've heard here that you pretty much determined what you wanted to do when you were in the service. Yeah. If you didn't like the job they gave you, you told them no, you didn't like it, yeah. and went and did something else. Yeah, well, I was in one job, and I didn't like the, the what you call the commanding officer. And I said, well, I said, if you don't like what I'm doing, or the way I'm doing, I said, just send me back to where I come from. And two days later, I had change of orders, went back where I come from, because I cussed him out twice, <laughs> and they didn't go for that. No, I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> oh, golly. Uh, you were on, you were on a destroyer. Yeah. I was only fresher out of Pearl Harbor 
came out of Norfolk, Virginia. Then I went to uh, destroyer tenders, submarine tenders. When you were on, on that destroyer, did you ever go to like Japan? Yeah. Yeah, every nine months, we would go to Japan and stay for nine months. Westpac tour. In uh, Yakuska, Japan. Okay. That's how about was, how, how was the ride on that destroyer, Denver? They were rough riding. A lot of people got seasick because they couldn't, the way the ship, you know, would, would do like that or up and down, a lot of them couldn't stand it. I couldn't for a while. I finally got used to it. Where was where was the space for the torpedo men on a on a destroyer? Were you forward or aft? Or? It was in the midships, in the okay. center of the ship. You guys, what they call a poop deck, and then it was inside of it. And you could come out and go either way that you wanted to. Was there a torpedo shop? Yeah. On a destroyer? Yeah, but it was just a small one. All it was was what you call a a hangar. Is really what it was. How many how many torpedoes would you have on board that ship? About ten or fifteen. You ever shoot any of them? No, we just fired them in practice. And one officer he he fired one that I told him I said, Well you gonna make a mistake. He says, No. So he, he fired it and he went out the side of the ship and hit the side of another ship. They punched a hole in it. Did you have to go, after you fired those torpedoes, did, did your ship have to go and pick them up again? Yeah. They came up and they floated? Yeah. Yeah, they had a, what they called an air tank that made them refloat. And then you'd go out in a small boat and pick them up. Okay. How fast did those torpedoes run? Mm, probably. 10 or 12 knots, which is miles, what they call. They weren't very fast then, were they? No. How far would they go, Denver? They'd go maybe a mile and a half. Okay. So if you were going to fire a torpedo at another ship, you, you had to be pretty close to that. Yeah. Ship. I'd say you'd have to be at least within a half a mile or so. Okay. Otherwise, you just miss your target altogether. Because I've seen them fire some of them, and the torpedo go right up on the beach instead of where it was supposed to go. I was on one that went up on the beach and blew its own detail up. Where was that, Denver? In uh, San Diego. Oh, okay. You ever go to Vietnam? No. I always managed to get out of Vietnam. I had two brothers that went, but I told them, I said, I don't want no part of it. And I said, before I go to Vietnam, I said, I'll go over the hill and get a transfer. And that's what I did. I went AWOL for 30 days when they were going to send me to Vietnam. So I wound up going to Rota, Spain, spent three years there, and then you I went retired. to Rota. You were on a tender, right? Yeah. On a tender for about, oh, I'd say maybe six months, and then I went what they call a shore patrol, the same as shore duty. And I spent the rest of my time on shore duty with the shore patrol. That's where I'd go to work at five in the evening and work till two o'clock in the morning. You spent, uh, Six months on the tender at Rota. Did you have other time on a tender somewhere? Yeah, in uh, San Diego. In San Diego. Which was How long did you spend on a tender there? I spent three years in San Diego, then two in uh, Spain. Okay. For folks who don't understand, what does a tender do? It's a repair ship. Okay. It prepares either destroyers or submarines. Depends on what kind of repair ship it was. Have and a machine shop on, on board? Yeah, I was on both. Have a machine shop on board? Yeah. Electrical shop? Yeah. But Boilers, steam fitters? Yeah, but uh, 
while I was on them, I worked in the, what you call the, the deck force, which was topside. Okay. That way you stayed with plenty of fresh air. Because you could go down in the engine rooms where it's hot and no air, and it wouldn't take you long to get seasick. Were you ever on that tender when it went anywhere? Only when it went to Spain. Okay, and, uh, so you went across the Atlantic? Yeah, the and then I went to San Diego to Japan on the same tender. I was on the USS Prairie out of San Diego. That's the one I went to Japan on. And about halfway to Japan, we had a collision with a destroyer. They cut the bow completely off the destroyer. How'd that happen? Do you know how that happened, Denver? The guy just made the wrong turn. When they give right rudder, he went left where the ship was at. And he just, just like that, and went right into it and cut that off. Was the destroyer's fault? Yeah. Okay. Did you do any patching up on that destroyer then? Just in the deck force. That's about, about the only repair work I did. In all those years in the Navy, what do you think about the chow? Well, some of it was good and some of it wasn't. Some of the chow they had, I wouldn't feed to a dog. I've seen dogs just sniff at it and walk away. That's how bad it was. Did it make any difference what kind of ship you were on as to whether or not the food was good or not good? Yes, it depended on the ship, whether they had good food or not. But the destroyer that I was on in Pearl Harbor, they had the lousy food on it. Was a tender generally pretty good duty, Denver? Yeah, it was best duty, in my opinion. Because after I got off of destroyers, I stayed on tenders from then on up until retirement. You were on you were on shore patrol in Rhoda? Yeah. So what's a shore patrolman do? They just uh was what you actually call military police. They'd go downtown and uh, keep a service man out of trouble with the civilians because a lot of times they would get mad and fight one another. And it's our job to keep them out of the civilian population. Otherwise, they'd have a big fight on their hands. You, uh, you never went in any bars chasing them sailors, did you? Yeah, I went some, one or two, but not many. You never would have gone in them bars, would you, Denver? Huh? No? Most of what I do is just go to the door and look in, see what's going on, and then leave and go somewhere else. You carry a forty-five as the shore patrolman? Yeah. That and a billy club. Billy club? You ever use that billy club? We used it a couple of times. There in the road of Spain, we got one. He got in trouble up on the, on the halfway between town and the base, and his our job to go in and get him out of trouble. Otherwise, he would get in civilian jail, and he'd probably stay there. So you had to go bop this white hat? Yeah. <clears throat> and then drag him back to the ship? Yeah. Put him in a brig? Yeah, and then sometimes he'd get out and go back ashore, and the thing would start all over again. There's one guy we hauled him in. Four different times. Four different times? Yeah. But he, he'd come in and haul him back to the ship. He'd go back ashore and get in another fight. And then we'd have to go get him out of it. And it took four times before somebody was smart enough to, not to let him go over? Yeah. Okay. Denver, you said that you lost a stripe somewhere. You went from Seaman to Seaman Deuce? Yeah, that was in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. When I cussed the senior petty officer that I was working under, because we didn't get along. So I told him, I said, well, if you don't like what I'm doing, send me back where I came from. 
So we never could get along. So the only thing we do is just transfer. They put you in the brig? No. No? Just refined, uh, restricted you? Yeah, quarters? just restricted me to the quarters and the ship okay. where you couldn't go on liberty. And then you had the captain's mast. Yeah. But a lot of times I got restricted where I couldn't go on liberty, but I'd slip off and go on liberty anyway. And we'd wind up in Waukee Beach when we was really AWOL. I spent three days in Waukee Beach being AWOL before they ever found out where I was at. Hmm. You went, <clears throat> you went before the captain for captain's mast. Yeah. What was that like? You just, well, you went up there and then you, you told him his story and he either believed it or he would give you extra duty. I wound up most of the time with extra duty. How many I, times you go before the captain? I went about four times. First time was in Norfolk, Virginia. And then I went from there to Japan, Spain, went to Malta. That's were, close to Spain. Were you married when you were in the service? Yeah. When I first went in, I was single for two years, then I got married and stayed married till I came out of the service and then got divorced. Did you have kids? Yeah, I have one daughter. She lives down in Burleson. Do, uh, did you take your family overseas at all? Then? Yeah. Where'd they go? They went to the road of Spain the road. where I was stationed at. Okay. That was the only place they went was just Spain. Did you live off the ship? When you were on shore patrol in Rhoda, did you live on the beach? Yeah. Okay. In government housing or? It's in government housing. It's just like everyday job. Okay. You had a shift and you went down there and checked in and? Yeah. And then I'd go back ashore. The chief or somebody told you what you were supposed to do for the day? Yeah. And then I'd usually wind up going back ashore and doing it. But I spent very little time at sea, except for what time I spent in Norfolk. What was the best duty you had in the Navy? In the, it was really in Spain. That was the best, best duty station I had. It was, I lived a half a mile from town to the base, and I spent most of my time between the two. What did you do with your off-duty time when you were in Spain there? You had wife and daughter with you? Yeah. So did you go into Spain, into the countryside or anything? Yeah, we go to different uh, parts of Spain. I wind up in Madrid, Rosa, Spain, Cadiz, Spain. And then I come back and got to the West Coast and spent the rest of my time in uh, Japan. Did you live on the beach in Japan? Yeah. Yeah, with me being on shore patrol, I had to either could live on the ship or on the beach, and I chose the beach. But you couldn't, was, take, you couldn't take your family when you went to Japan? Um, okay. How'd you get along with the Japanese people? They were real friendly. They, they were, all speak English? Yeah. There were some that couldn't speak English. They would say something, and then uh, somebody would translate that could speak English. But I spent most of my time in Japan. You eat their food over there, the Japanese? Yeah. yeah. Was it pretty good? Yeah, some of it was. But some of it, it wasn't no good at all. It was what you would call leftovers. What was the good stuff? Was it seafood or? Yeah, it was seafood and stuff. But when I got out of Spain, I was glad to go back stateside. If you had your choice of going to Spain or going to, to Japan, which one would you choose? I'd have took Japan. Would you? All uh, the people in Spain speak English? Yeah. Some of them couldn't speak English. I lived in the bottom of my apartment, and then the apartment above me 
was Spanish, and they couldn't speak no English at all. But the, you could, every once in a while, you could make out what they were saying. But very few times you could understand even what they were saying. But most of the time you had to have a translator. When you came back and you were discharged, Denver, all that time you spent in the Navy, did that help you when you got to be a civilian again? Yeah. Yeah, I went in 51, came out in 53. In 55, I went back in because I got fed up with civilian life. And brother said, well, you know, you can't come home. I said, that's why I'm leaving, because I'm tired of being at home. I said, I'm going to join up and do some traveling. And I traveled all over the world while I was in. Was that the best part about the service for you, Denver, the fact that you got to travel? Yeah. Meet different people? Yeah, meet different people. And spend about two years in one uh, duty station. And then I'd transfer. But I managed to get my own transfers each time. I'd do something that they didn't like, and then they would, what you call, fire me and send me somewhere else. That's a that's a different way of doing things. Yeah. Most, most folks don't do it that way, mm. but I guess it worked. Yeah. What did you do after you got out? When, when you got out uh, in 70, let's see, 70, 74 you got out and you spent yeah. three years in the reserves. Yeah. So what did you do when it got out in 1974, Denver? Mm. I, I worked on the torpedo school, which was done by Forest Park. They had a school there at the time with that Ben Hogan, that golfer. I worked for him for about four years. You worked at Hogan in, in Fort Worth where they yeah. make the golf clubs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were making golf clubs. And I, what I was doing, I was sending the golf clubs, you know, the, the part you know, where you'd hit the ball with, I would send that down where it was smooth. And then what'd you do after you worked there at Hogan? And then I went back in the Navy. Okay. I got fed up with the, his uh, classes and stuff, so I said, I'm going back in the Navy. And my brother, he said, well, when you go, he says, you don't come out until they say you can. I said, well, that's one reason I'm going back in, is to travel. And I did more traveling than I'd ever do in civilian life. How long have you been here at this facility, Denver? Right here? Yeah. I've been here going on three years. Three years. Have you traveled at all during that time? Yeah, a couple of times. Where have you gone since you've been here? Just uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, you went to North from went here? Went there and then went to San Diego and then went to Pearl Harbor and then got come back to Norfolk and spent there until I got out of the Navy. Okay. Well, Denver, you have an interesting story. You had an interesting career in the Navy, sir. Yeah. We appreciate your time this morning. Appreciate the time you spent in the Navy for us, sir. Yeah. yeah, I came out of the Navy once and tried to go back in, and they wouldn't let me. But I finally managed to get back in. But I had to what you say, bribe some of the guys to get back in. And once I got back in, I just stayed until retired. You bet. Okay, sir. Click. Ah. Uh.